All right. So the first thing uh, that we need to make sure you understand is what your group has to make sure you scan uh, this thing. What your product has to look like. You have groups, uh, you know what you have to do. The second thing that we have to do is go over the uh, concepts covered in the lab. This lab covers a lot of concepts, but we're only going to touch on a few of them, and then we'll keep developing them over the, over the rest of the quarter. In order to help you understand what's going on here, uh, and you're going to see a lot of uh, vocabulary words in this lab that you may not be aware of. There are two methodologies, two strategies that we could use for you to learn this material. I could lecture you about every, every concept that's in this lab, like osmosis. Let me just go ahead and write the big ones down that you'll see again. Uh, osmosis, uh, solute, solvent, solution, Ions, transport, across membranes. If you're coming in late, you have to go get a pass from the office and sign in. So these are kind of the big ones that this lab touches on. All right. You could also talk about plant development. Uh, plant reproductive organs. cross-pollinization. Ladies, go get a pass. And, oh, you got, all right, put it here. And sign in. Cross-pollination. Gametes. Fertilization. And the list goes on, but those are kind of the big ones that this lab could touch on if you really wanted to focus in on what we're going to be talking about today a little bit is solvent, solute, and solution. And next week we'll talk about ions. And then after that, we'll talk about transport, osmosis, crossing the membrane, what is a membrane, biomolecules, et cetera. So there's a lot to discuss, and, there's, and we need to unpack that slowly. So rather than starting with this and spending a week lecturing on and going through problems on all of this, I thought we would start with a lab, let you experience, experiment with, with a fairly simple concept of control groups. These are the main ideas of the lab, right? Controls, experimental group, control group. And also to experience this, to experience all that, and take a look at it without really understanding the vocabulary. So as you're making your observations during this lab, as you're planting the seeds, if you're coming in late, I need you to get a pass. No pass, it's just, you need to scan in and explain why. You need to scan in anyways and explain why. All right. So, 
you experiment, you have controls, experimental group, control group. What is an experiment? So that's really the key to what we're doing and why we're doing it right now. We're going to talk today a little bit of solute solvent solution because it directly applies to how you're setting up the lab. All of this directly applies, but it would be too much, I think, to discuss all this now. But we will be talking about it. So as you're making observations in your notebook during the, during the next week, because you'll be taking notes every time you come in to water the plants, you're going to make notes of what you see and how you're measuring it, etc. Take a look at what's happening and think about it because you will be seeing it again. We will be discussing and identifying what is happening at each stage of this plant development of this, exp of this experiment. So this is kind of a, what we call, dis have you ever heard of discovery learning? No, no, that's all right. So this is called kind of discovery learning. So it's better, some of us believe that it's better that you discover what it means for a plant to germinate, that you discover what pollen is, that you, rather than me telling you, it's better that you discover it. So it's experiencing these hands-on labs, I feel is the best way to introduce major concepts. Sometimes we'll do the opposite. Sometimes I'll explain a lot of different concepts and then you'll do the lab and you'll see if you can get, make that concept work and see that concept in action. For instance, when we cover osmosis, it will be our next lab. When we look at osmosis, you're actually going to make a gel, a polymer of a gel, and it's called agrose gel. It's a seaweed protein that we're going to make. Uh, and you're going to add acid to it and an indicator called phenolphthalein, phenolphthalein, and you're going to see... You're going to put it in a base, and you're going to see the osmosis, the movement of water from high to low, happen in a cube. And you're going to measure the rate of that movement of water. So it's really interesting. It's a very interesting lab. All the, it's colorful. It's, it's vibrant. There's, it's action-packed, if you will. No explosions. Um, but those will come later. We'll do, uh, not an explosion, but we'll do... We'll release the energy and sugar all at once, and you'll see how much energy is in sugar. It's, a, it's an amazing experiment, but we'll have to do it uh, at the end of the year. Yeah. Experience, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I, it's very messy. Just, so the whole point is, you, during this lab, you're going to experience all of this, but we're not going to identify it. You're not going to be tested on transport across the membrane, on plant development, on the parts of a flower. You should look at the parts of a flower. You should think about this being a compound flower and how, how this flower has, is actually made of a thousand little flowers. Like that's really some really cool and interesting concepts that you can really take a look at. But I'm not gonna be testing you on that. What am I really, what are we, what's our focus? Because you guys keep telling me you want to know what's important here. You want to know what's the purpose, right? I, and these are good reasons. These are good questions. So the purpose, the main purpose here is to look at controls, experimental groups, control groups, and see how an experiment is designed and see if you can actually answer a question using an experiment. That's the whole point of this lab. It's an actual experiment. It's, it's a lab, but it only becomes an experiment when you have what? Controls, experimental group, and control groups. Once you have this, now you got an experiment. Otherwise, it's just a lab, which I shouldn't say just a lab because labs are cool too. Uh, so labs can be, can be experiments, but not all labs are experiments. So an experiment is when you're dealing with collecting data and you have a control group, an experimental group, and all that. And then you have to analyze it, and we'll go through the steps next week. But the bottom line is you're going to, you're going to experience all of this. You're going to focus on this. And then, as I said, don't forget when you're looking at it that these three, and we'll talk about it before you leave today, these three are important, okay? 
Because we, you can't do it unless you understand what di what concentration is. Another word that I should add to this list is concentration. And you're going to be looking at concentration a lot this year. Concentration is a big deal. So how concentrated something is is a big deal. So. And it actually, this idea of concentration, solute, solvent, solution is going to feed into osmosis and diffusion. It's going to feed into how a cell works. Uh, think about, when you're thinking about concentration, we talk about solute, solvent, solution. Think about being a doctor. When we talk about dose, what is dose? What does the word dose mean? And so what, is it, what really are we worried about when we say dosage? Concentration. Because you give someone a too strong a dose, you'll kill them. You don't give them strong en a strong enough dose, it's not going to help them. So as a physician, dosing the drug is, is very important, whether you're a veterinarian, a nurse, or doctor. So concentration of a solute in a solution is incredibly important. What solution would you be worried about in your body? or any animal would be worried about in their body, what solution do you think a doctor's constantly worried about? You, didn't, you don't have to uh, get a pass because I guess there's a lot of people put skin in. Okay, explain why you're late. Yeah, blood. blood. So when you're talking about the concentration of blood, well, how much sugar's in your blood, you're worried about that if you're diabetic. So the concentration of sugar is important if you're diabetic. I'm diabetic, so I know this. It could be, if you're, if you're anemic, it could be the concentration of iron in your blood or concentration of oxygen in your blood. So these concentrations become very important when you're talking about uh, surgeons, uh, nurses, uh, anesthesiologists, assistants, uh, physician assistants. The, if you don't understand this concept, it's going to be hard for you to understand much of anything in biology. So when you're playing around with this, experiment, you're, you're discovering new ideas and maybe seeing things that you haven't seen before, consider, consider focusing on these things that I'm highlighting now. But for today, for most of today, what I'd like you to do is work in your groups and come up with number one, what materials do you need? A materials list. Two, you're probably going to have to do two first. The second thing you, uh, that I need from you is the procedures. Remember, the procedure you have in the lab is not the one we're going to use. We have this equipment. Oh, they took it in the back. They're filling up the little pots with soil for you. So the soil will... I, 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 feel, I feel like we should try to save you as much time for tomorrow as we can. And we're going to have the pots filled with soil for you. We're going to have the salt solutions already set for you. Unless you want a different cell solution, then we can talk about it, all right? But you want your procedures. You want, you want to have your data. What data are you going to collect? What is your hypothesis? This is not in order. You understand that, right? Because you have to have a hypothesis first. What's your question? That's, this actually looks like it's almost... What question are you trying to answer with this experiment? Okay. What's your procedure? What data are you going to collect? And the last thing you guys have to work on is answering the questions in every question that you can that's in the lab. The lab has a lot of questions. Answer every question that you can. Now, I'm going to let you work for most of the period. If you tell me that you'd rather keep working as a group, and we can cover sol solvent solution, sol uh, solute solvent solution tomorrow while the lab is, is running. We can do that, all right? So whatever you feel you're at as a group. If you're being productive as a group, I'm going to leave you alone. And we'll talk tomorrow about the content. If you, if you feel like you're, you're done, you got everything done and most of you are done, then we'll go ahead and, and move in to explain the content now. Does that, feel, does that feel good? Do you understand what's going on? How are you feeling? If, you don't, if you're feeling like you need things to slow down, you feel like you need things to speed up, you feel like you need to give me that feedback.
All right. It doesn't have to be here, this open session. You might be embarrassed about it, but you can come and talk to me after class. If you ever feel like uh, some kids feel like I'm picking on them, like people, teachers pick on them. If you feel like I'm too harsh, not harsh enough, if I'm, you know, you can give me that feedback. I don't, I'm not promising I'm going to do anything about it because I might disagree with you, but I will promise that I will listen to you. All right. So you can tell me anything. Uh, I've been told everything from F you to, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm an old man, right? I, I, I've dealt with a lot of stuff, so do, you don't have to worry about if you feel like as any kind of certain way, then you need, we need to have a discussion. I think I've been clear on what needs to happen. I think I've been clear on what's not acceptable. If I haven't been clear on what's not acceptable, I'll, move, I'll repeat it again later. All right, are we good? All right, have a good day. So I just want to make, make sure we're, we're clear on Page, can someone give me the salts, uh, the salt lab? It's right behind you, yeah. On, as you flip through it, the first two pages are for teachers. That you shouldn't have got it, but I, I put a copy of the wrong version. You have the introduction. Read the introduction. It really has a lot of information, yeah. You forgot one. There's one on the front table. Oh, I thought you said you, you forgot one. Uh, yeah, of course you can use the restroom. Don't forget to scan out, take the pass, all that. So on page on page 8-6, you have materials and then you have a procedure. Remember that procedure for A is, is not what you're gonna be doing. If you want an outline for that procedure, we went over it yesterday. I posted it online on YouTube yes, last night. This morning I posted it to Schoology and to, your, and to your webpage. But the outline for the procedure is already done for you. We did it yesterday in class. You should have notes on that. Option B is only if you want to do it, so I'm not even going to waste our, we're not even going to discuss option B since it won't even start till next week. And now on page 8-9, it says salty solution. It says, what date was the plant, what date were the plants, were the seeds planted? It asks you for a date. Obviously your date's gonna be tomorrow. It asks you for the salt solution used. Salt solution used. It asks you, so, and it gives you a percent. What percent salt solution? And then it asks you to, it gives you a table, and at table A, it asks you to fill out, uh, you know, uh, what is the amount of soil you're using, and then it, and then it asks, it asks the question of the type of soil, and then it says uh, the type of water. And then it says the amount of water. And then it says the number of seeds. Now you're gonna plant more than one seed in a container, just so you know. So the way this was set up originally, originally this lab was set up for that every group in this room would have one one pot with one set of seeds in it. And you'd have one salt solution, then we would collect, excuse me, class data on it. The only problem I have with that is that then some of you would never see anything grow, correct? Because some of you would only, uh, would, only would, would have a solution that's gonna kill the plant. So some of these solutions are gonna kill the plants. So you're never gonna see anything grow. Others will allow the plant to grow and it will thrive. Which solution is gonna do that? Well, we don't know. If you only had one solution, some of you would never see it grow. So I don't like that. So the way we set it up, and it took, it took a lot of effort. And again, the, my assistants have already put 
created your planters, your five planters. They already have soil in them. They're in the back. They're already in their trays, in the light tables. They're ready to go. We're going to count out the seeds. They're making the salt solution. So they're going, to, they're going to start mixing in salt. So we'll have that. So that being said, what you're going to need is this information for all five of your groups. You have your control group where you would answer the question. Obviously, you'd have the date. The salt solution used would be 0% salt, right? Is that correct? The amount of soil is going to be the same. I don't remember what it is. I'll, I'll give it to you tomorrow. The type of soil, everybody's going to have the same type and same amount for all the groups. So this is all going to be the same for all the groups. Does that make sense? For the control group and for each of the experimental groups, you're going to have all the same. So type is garden soil. Now, to be clear, that... You would normally not you say garden soil. What you'd normally say is loamy, silty, sandy. You would use words like acidic, basic, neutral. But we're not going to do that. We're going to use the word garden soil. For all of them. The amount... Let's just say, I'm going to just give it a number, 50 milliliters. And we're going to, this is going to be the same for all of them. You have a question? There's a question. Uh, we're not going to use either one. You're going to plant a number with, the soil's already, already, already been put in. It's going to be garden soil. And you're going to put... Well, let's, let's just go on and, and, and answer this. The type of water, the type of water, type H2O. Here, it's going to be distilled water, DI water, distilled water, DI equals distilled. All right, so distilled water. The rest, uh, all the rest of these are salt water. Salt water, salt, salt, salt. A number of seeds. The number of seeds I haven't figured out yet, but it's probably going to be around five seeds each. So everybody's going to get about five seeds. There might be a difference between groups. So again, you're gonna have this little, you're gonna have this little pot. You're gonna have in the pot. You have this little pot. And in the pot, you're gonna have soil. And in the, on the soil, you're gonna put this little seed. There's probably gonna be five of these little seeds in here. All right. And you want to keep them on the surface, keep the seeds on the surface, because what's going to stimulate their growth, what's going to start them growing, is light. If you bury them too deep, they won't grow. They won't start growing. So try not to bury them too deep. So that's, what you, and of course, each one, of the, each one of these is going to be, this is going to be 0.5%, this is going to be, 1%, this is going to be 2.5%, and this is going to be 5% solution. And each one of them is going to have a different bottle. We have this big jug. It's going to have really concentrated salt. It's going to be like 20% salt. And from there, we will take and make the five smaller bottles. Right? There's going to be 5% and the small, you know, et cetera, all the way down, okay? And then we'll keep diluting them until you get, you're going to have water for each of these. And every day, you're going to add a certain milliliter of water. The, the, not, the amount of water, by the way, which I did not put here, the amount of water is going to be about 10 milliliters. 
and that's going to be across the board 10 milliliters. See the amount of water, the, the amount of soil, the quality of the soil, the amount of light is all going to be the same because that's how we do science. We keep all the variables the same except for the, the, uh, the independent variable. We want to change that and we want to see how the dependent variable changes because of the independent variable. So that's how we work science. So that's your job. That's, you're going to have to, I just pretty much did a lot of that for you because this page, uh, page 8-9 was confusing a lot of people. So I want to make sure you don't, so 8-9, 8-10, this covers that. And you guys can fill out table C. You'll be filling it out tomorrow. Then there's some questions you have to discuss. You may not be able to answer till after tomorrow. We will be answering questions together. This is not a test. This is a learning exercise. Is that correct? Is that understood? So I don't need you to, to get me the right answer. I need you to think about the questions and then ask questions tomorrow during our discussion phase. Let's discuss it. Discussion means discuss, not me lecturing you. So I want you to ask me questions. I want you to, uh, if you don't understand, I want you to ask for clarification. I want, you know, yeah, you know, I want a discussion, not you staring off into space, right? And then just writing down the stuff that I write on the board and walking home and say, I, and yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not, that's not a discussion, all right? So if, if you understood all that and you're ready to go, you guys, you guys have a job to do. Write your procedures out. Make sure you have your data table set. Make sure you know what you're going to do tomorrow. And tomorrow you're just going to come in and do it. Is that clear? Okay. Oh, and you're going to come in, by the way, just so you know, you're going to have to water these plants every day for five days. Over the weekend, they'll have water. All right, I'll make sure of that. But on my, tomorrow, so you're going to come in tomorrow. Wait, do you guys have lab tomorrow or Friday? Tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. So come in and do the lab tomorrow. But then you'll Friday, you have to come in and water it in the morning. One, one or more of you have to come in Friday morning to water your plants. On Saturday, Sunday, I'll make sure they're watered. Then Monday, you have to come in and water the plants. Yeah. There's some, yeah, someone came back. Yes, you may. Don't forget to scan out. All right, we're all good. Any questions? So you're not, since you have no questions, we're all good. You're working as a team. All right, get your stuff ready then. You got the rest of the period. Unless, uh, if, you get, if we get all get done, if, there's, if we are all done before the end of the period, I can start going over the content, okay? I, I can't. All right, so... Uh, uh, on a more, on a more uh, detailed lesson learned, uh, when we have a graduated cylinder, again, oops, I hate my, let me just, So when you have a graduated cylinder, there are graduations. There are these little marks. On a graduated cylinder, this is a graduated cylinder. This is what we use. It's a cylinder. Obviously, graduated means as there's marks that you can read. With a beaker, often they do have marks. Beakers do, this is what a beaker looks like. I showed you an example of it earlier today. So this is a beaker. They also have marks, but these are just estimates. These are not accurate. What you, what you used over here were, were bottles. You had bottles that had specific volume or specific concentrations here. These are just bottles. So, so a couple of vocabulary words that can be very important. So this again is a beaker. Beakers we use to hold, to hold the liquid, to mix them, to run a reaction. A graduated cylinder is used to measure volumes. All right, let's talk about the word concentration. 
So what are you going to be tested on on Monday? So on Monday you will have a quiz, and you will your quiz will be on obviously what is a control, which of these is a control group, which is an experimental group. So you should be able to identify, right, which of those they are. So that's key. Uh, you've read the chapter, theoretically. You've read the chapter. You've taken notes. You've done the lab. You've set up the lab, your procedures. You designed your experiment. So you should understand that by now. If you don't, see me tomorrow morning. Is everybody in the room? Did the people in the hallway come in? Okay. So concentration. Concentration is... Before we can talk about concentration, I have to discuss three vocabulary words, and that's solute, solvent, and solution. So those are three very important words. Solute is what is dissolved. A solvent is the compound doing the dissolving. So, and the solution is the result. That's what you get when, you're, when you mix the solvent and the solute. So a really great example is salt. Would be, salt would be the solute. Water would be the solvent. And the result is salt water. When you look, it's, how do you know it's a, it, by the way, it's, uh, when we're talking about a solution, it's a homogeneous mixture. It's just a mixture. When we talk about dissolving, the word dissolving, it's just one is being surrounded by the other. It's not a chemical reaction. Salt water is made of two things, water and salt. When you have Kool-Aid, you have three things in Kool-Aid. Everybody here drank Kool-Aid before? Has at least seen it? Okay. I keep telling you guys, taking pictures of this won't help. Writing it down will. And if you can't see it, move to a place where you can see it. And if you, if you can't, if, you go, if we're going too fast, watch the video at home. Don't take pictures and then forget about the picture and think you got it in your head. That won't work. So Kool-Aid, let's take a look at Kool-Aid as, as a really great example. Is it one word or two? I think it's hyphenated. Two words, I think. It's hyphenated, yeah. Is it A-I-D or A-I-D? I think it's A-I-D, yeah. All right, so Kool-Aid. With Kool-Aid, you take, and you're obviously you're adding water. Water is still the solvent with, with Kool-Aid. You still got water. But then you add two things to this mixture. You're adding what are the two things and whoever's made Kool-Aid before. That's right. Sugar, either some kind of, it's really just some kind of dye. It's just an edible dye. And it's a like food coloring. It's a dye. And then, of course, sugar. When you mix the three things together, what you get, you don't, it doesn't look like water anymore. It looks something like, you know, this. It's a, some kind of colored fluid. You, can you see the dye, the dye particles? In, when you have green Kool-Aid, can you see the, the little green molecules? No. 
It, it's, it, it lo you can't see any particulate. It's all, the dye is mixed completely. Do you see any sugar in it when, you, when you're drinking it? Some kids do put extra sugar and then you get sugar at the bottom, don't you? Those are those kids, I know some of you are in this room, those kids that really love the sugar. Yes, but hurry up. You'll get, you'll get sugar at the bottom. But the sugar that's in the liquid, do you see it? No, you just see this green liquid. It's one, one, one homo. The same. Homo means the same. It's one thing that looks the same throughout. A homogeneous mixture is uh, one thing that looks the same throughout. That's what homo means. It's same. So a homogeneous mixture is a liquid that looks the same. So this Kool-Aid is a great example. Salt water is also uh, a really great example. As you can see, when you poured it out, all you saw was something, it looked like clear water. Until you taste it, then you would taste the salt. But you can't see the salt because it's dissolved completely. Dissolved means it's surrounded. So if you could look into it with a really super, it doesn't exist, but some really crazy microscope, what you would see is this little, this little sodium, and we haven't talked about elements yet, but they would have the sodium. Sodium's uh, atomic symbol is that. Uh, it has a plus, sodium plus, and you'd see a bigger atom called chlorine, ion, they're both ions, and they'd be surrounded by Water. Water is a molecule. And so what you'd be, what you'd end up with, all right. I hate it when, oh, well, maybe I can zoom in. Let's see if this works. Nope. Uh, when things don't work, I really want to lose my temper, but I'm not allowed. It's not fair. You guys lose your temper all the time. Yeah, you do. Maybe not you, but I do it. You'll, we'll, see, we'll talk more about water, but what happens is you get water is an oxygen atom that's bound. What does the word bound mean? Attached to, can we use the word attached? You guys cool with that? Attached to two hydrogen atoms. So when you got an oxygen atom attached to oh, why would you do that? The hydrogens kind of surround the chlorine and the oxygen surround the sodium. You get something that looks like this. This is what dissolve means. When we talk about dissolve, what happens is that these molecules align themselves, they dissolve each other, and the water actually separates, the water separates the sodium and the chloride. So you don't, they don't, they can't come together. You can't see the particle. It's dissolved. It's floating in the water. The water, the water's, everything's moving all, all the time. I can't show you that. But the, the chlorine and the sodium are separated. If you looked at a salt, a salt solid, which you would see is a big clump, and I think you've looked at them, they look like little cubes of, of solid. That's a lot of sodium and chloride, sodium and chloride all distributed evenly, attached to one another. Water separates them, and they get dissolved. That's what dissolved means. So when we put that, when we created these solutions, and you created a lot of sodium, when they have a 5% solution, what you have is you have a volume of water, the solvent, water, and then, so let's say, uh, and then you have some, some volume of, salt that you've added to it 
So you've added some salt, uh, some amount of salt to add to the water to make it 5%. That amount is going to be more than, is going to be more than the 0.5% solution where you added salt to it. Does that make sense? Because salt is a solute and water is a solvent. So the more solute you have in the water, water being the solvent, because what is concentration? Concentration is solute divided by solvent. And if that amount of solute divided by solvent is five, out, five parts out of 100, then you got your 5%, correct? Well, obviously, 0.5% is going to be a lot less. So the solute constant, that's equals 5%, where if you were creating a 0.5%, it would be 5 out of 1,000. That would equal 0.5%. So that's what, whereas the top number is the solute, the bottom number is the solvent. Solute divided by solvent, that is concentration. All right, so you will be quizzed on that on, on, on Friday as well. Is that in the chapter reading? Did you guys read that chapter, chapter six yet? You read in chapter six, so it is there. Good to hear it. And it's chapter six, it is in chapter six, I'm hearing. I haven't really, I don't remember reading it. Um, I have four books I'm reading at the same time to keep up. But Did you say we're taking quiz yeah, the quiz is going to be on. I'll say it one more time. The, the whole control group, experimental group, independent and dependent variable, you're going to have to be able to identify those. You'll be given an experiment. You'll be asked to identify which of these is the independent variable, which is the dependent variable, which is the control group, which is the experimental group. And then you're going to also be asked to calculate the concentration of a solution given a certain amount of solute, and I'll be asking you in terms of percent. You can have all kinds of units, by the way. I could put five grams into uh, 10 liters, and what, what's, the, what's the concentration? 0.5 what? Grams per liter, right? And this is percent. Percent's the easiest thing because it's the easiest thing to imagine. But we could do all kinds of different units for concentration. But the key is what I'm going to be looking for on Monday is: Do you remember that what what is a solute? What's a sol solvent? What's a solution? And how do I, and that you dividing the solute amount by the solvent amount. If you can do that, those four or five things, you're going to ace the quiz. It's a quick quiz. All right? Should take you five, ten minutes. So you're going to have a, there's, there will be a time limit. So make sure you're able to do it. Are we good? Yeah. All right. Yeah. And where? Up at the top, I mean? Up here? All right. This is all recorded. It's about a 16-minute video. I will upload it uh, today right after you leave. Uh, so you'll have this at your disposal as well. I don't hear any questions. Uh, read Chapter 6. Make sure, uh, If you want me to send you some practice questions, let me know. Wow, that was quick. Okay, I'll send you some practice questions in Jupiter. All right, you're welcome. Have a good one. Wait, is it time to leave? Yeah. Hold on. We'll leave at 7. Well, we got to wait three minutes. I got to take a 10 minutes anyway, so that works. Okay. 
So the data that we're looking for is you're going to have day one, right? That's 24 hours. That starts today, so tomorrow, right? Tomorrow. So day one is tomorrow. Day zero is today. Day zero. Day one. Day two. Uh, day three and three. This is Saturday, Sunday. We're gonna have auto, we're gonna have we're gonna have water set up so that it stays moist over the week. Over, I'm gonna have to set this. I have I'm gonna set this on a timer. All right, Dave, please stop. Please stop. Thank you. Why can't we mute our phones? Because mine goes off a lot. I, I'm just saying, why can't we mute? Oh, oh, no, no. Day five. And we're going to move on. So day zero is today. This is obviously Friday. This is you planted them. This is when you plant, planted them. Day one, two, three, four, five. Come on, guys. Quiet. Forget about it. Forget about it. It's not that big a deal. It really, all, all, all in all, it never is a big deal. Even last year, the ninth grader big deal was not really a big deal. Nobody, a bunch of girls left. And if Aiden went, life goes on. You'd all be here. I'd feel sad because I love the girl, but that's the way it goes. I told you now during our safety lesson, I saw I, I had two kids get expelled. That's fine. It didn't. I, I didn't want it to happen, but you know, there's there, it's going to happen. So day zero, one, two, three, four, five. So this is going to be Monday. This is Tuesday. This is Wednesday. Day six, and then obviously day seven is a day you plant today, which is Thursday. By the way, Thursday is also known as R. Wednesday's W, uh, Tuesday's T, Monday's M, all right? Friday is F, all right? So that's kind of the way we, if, if you ever see these, these codes. In any case, what you're going to do then is the you're looking for the number, the number of seedlings in the zero percent solution, zero percent, one percent. Uh, I'm sorry, it would be zero percent, point five percent. 1%, 2.5%, and 5% solutions. That's it. How many seedlings? That's what you're doing. The number of seedlings. So for the 5%, for the 0%, for all of these on the day it's planted, on day zero, you have zero seedlings, obviously. Zero seedlings. Now, tomorrow, are there going to be seedlings? I don't know. We'll see. Honestly, I don't expect any tomorrow. Saturday, Sunday, we won't know because I'm not coming in on Saturday, Sunday. I don't know if any of you are coming in, but I know I'm not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna water on the, I'm gonna put water in the tray and it'll, it'll keep it watered throughout the weekend. So Saturday and Sunday, we're not gonna collect data on these days, unfortunately, because I just can't come in on Saturday, Sunday. I can't handle it. I have too much to do at home. If I have to, I will, but it really is too much. So then Monday, 
you're going to have some number. Tuesday, you have some uh, number. Wednesday, you'll have some number. And, of course, your hypothesis is, how, how, are there going to be any seedlings? Do you expect to see any seedlings here? Do you expect to see any seedlings here? Do you expect to see any seedlings, et cetera? We already said our hypothesis for the first one. We're going to expect the expectation, and I'm going to go ahead and write it in yellow. The expectation is by Thursday, we're going to have five seedlings, right, here in the, in the distilled water, the DI water. We expect, we're not writing that in. I'm just telling you when you collect the data, but the, our, ex, our hypothesis would be that we'd expect five seedlings by the end of the, of the seven days. Does that make sense? And because everything else was kept the same, then the only difference between the number of seedlings here, theoretically, is, is going to be how much salt was in that solution that you're adding to it every day. And we might have to increase the water. Now that, that I looked at it, some of the kids were telling me that they didn't think it was enough. We might, we'll see about tomorrow. But we might have to increase that number to 20 milliliters. So, that, so that's expected. The, our hypothesis our hypothesis predicts our hypothesis predicts that there will be five five seedlings here on day seven. Okay? That's what we need to do. That's what you need. so make those charts.